So a while ago I was drinking a beer, specifically a Stella Artois. When I look at the label and see it says Anno 1366, the year 1366. That is a long time ago. So look it up and apparently it's true. Stella Artois has been around for more than 650 years. <laughs> Pretty crazy. Turns out Stella's not even the oldest brewery though. That would be these guys, founded all the way back in 1040. Which means that the institution of that brewery is older than not just the airplane, the automobile, and the United States, but also the city of Tokyo, the printing press, the Aztec Empire, the Cathedral of Notre Dame, and Genghis Khan. Remember at the beginning when I said I was drinking that Stella a while ago? That was 200 years ago. Not really, but it was more than two or three years back during COVID. And the reason this thought has been stuck with me all that time is because 600 years is an incredibly long time for people to be doing anything with any sort of consistency. And remember, I'm not talking about a country, a religion, or even a city here. These are breweries that have persisted through multiple human lifetimes, through the invention of electricity, TikTok, and refrigeration, keeping up the same practices, producing the same recognizable product, and operating under the same brand name for all those years. A company, a brand, creating a product. Now, I know that's kind of a gross corporate way to describe a centuries-old institution built by generations of living and dying monks and peasants, especially when all they really wanted was a stiff drink. But while I started this whole thing off talking about beer companies, really I'm talking about companies in general. There are universities and financial institutions that are hundreds of years old. And while it might not sound crazy to think that a bank or the University of Oxford could hang on for a couple of centuries, after all, I mean, people tend to want safety with their money and their education. The thing I'm really interested in is not why some medieval institutions managed to stick around into modernity, because I'm pretty sure the answer is just that most of us are lazy and sons tend to drink the same beer as their fathers and grandfathers. Now, what I'm really interested in is the fact that I'm pretty sure some of today's big companies are planning to survive for at least as long as Stella Artois. Now, this is the part of the video where some of you are going to start to get mad at me, and more so, mad about the state of the world. We hear the word corporation so often that we don't really think about what it means. Now, I hate to be the guy who's referencing the Latin etymology, but I am that guy. And here I think that it's actually pretty interesting, because the word corporation comes from corpus, the Latin word for body. It's also where we get the word corpse, by the way. But it doesn't just refer to a dead body, but also a living body, a living human body. That's not an accident, by the way. Because a corporation in a cultural, societal, and legal sense is an institution made into a person, a legal person. Now, we've internalized this language so much that we don't even really think about it. For example, Amazon owns a warehouse, Tesla wants to expand into China, Enron dies a very bloody death. Owning, wanting, and dying are things that people do. Or, maybe more specifically, things that persons do. It's easy to forget that in the most technical sense, none of these companies are real. They don't exist in the world outside of our minds. Yes, now there is such a thing as a headquarters, which is a physical building. But if Netflix's headquarters was destroyed by a volcano, you wouldn't say that Netflix, the company, is dead. Even if their whole board was fired and then the headquarters exploded in a freak volcano accident, I'd wonder if Hulu had made some dark bargain with the supernatural. But I still wouldn't say that Netflix, the company, is dead. And that's because a corporation is more than just its assets or its leadership. It's this weird, amorphous ghost that just persists and acts on the world if enough of us believe in it. Except it's not just a fairy tale. In the world's largest economies, companies are legally persons, with a lot of the rights and responsibilities that come with that. They're fickle, too with desires, goals, successes, and failures, just like human persons. But unlike Tinkerbell, who only exists if we believe in her, corporations are powerful. And now that they have existed as legal persons for hundreds of years with a force of government and capital resources, 
they can pretty much insist that we treat them as such. Now, I know this might all sound like conspiratorial woo-woo sci-fi, despite the fact it is very real legal precedent. And I admit I am tempted to take this video down a rabbit hole where we speculate about future robot intelligences petitioning for legal status as humans before accepting that filing paperwork as Sunny LLC is probably easier than asking the Supreme Court to rule on the existence of an eternal soul. But maybe another time. I do actually have a real actionable point I want to make here, although you will have to tolerate a slight digression into the sometimes boring, sometimes exciting world of finance. Now, please, I know finance isn't for everyone, but I do have a point. You're just going to have to trust me. So if you'll come with me on this journey, one of the things I find most fascinating about finance is that it is fundamentally forward-looking. Accounting, for example, is about understanding what happened in the past. Finance is about predicting what you think will happen in the future. It's a guess. And no one will tell you this, but it's a little bit of a dream, too. So, for example, when you take out a loan, all that's really happening at the nuts and bolts is that someone gives you money today, and then you pay them back money over time. And that money in the future is uncertain. It's risky. So that future money is in the future, so it's worth less. Not worthless, but money in the future is worth less than money today. So when you take out a loan, you have to pay back a little bit more than you got in the first place. That is interest. That's all it is. An interest rate is just a bet on how risky the future will be. So congrats, you now understand 80% of how finance works. Now, I bring up all this finance stuff for a simple reason. If we human persons think through thoughts and emotions, that's how we make our decisions, then companies as legal persons, they think through finance. And remember, debt and finance, they are all about risk and the future. Now, how we think about our future is particularly important in a moment like today, when there is so much uncertainty and the world feels like it's always changing. More than that, it seems to be changing faster and faster. Personally, after the last few years, I take almost nothing for granted. The modern world is like swimming in the open ocean. If you're not a little bit scared, you're probably not paying attention. Which is why it doesn't surprise me that I know a lot of people who say they don't want kids. That with industrialization, overpopulation, war and greed, and all the hate in the world, they just don't want to bring someone into this mess. With the sad implication being that they're not sure they themselves want to keep living in this world either. And yet, amid all the uncertainty, I want to offer you a piece of data although you may not like it. In 2023, America's biggest companies took out more than a trillion dollars in new debt. Now you might hear that and think greed, risk, but I can promise you that when companies take out debt, they are making a bet and investing in their dream. Those companies are saying, I am here now. I can act, I can plan, and I can build. I am part of the future, and I will impose my will upon it. Every company you love, and every company you hate, they are all legal persons. And while we human persons live in fear and doubt and uncertainty, they are hard, decisive, and adamant that not just for 600 years, or even a thousand years, but for as long as they can, they will shake the world. As for you, listener, we human persons, I can't tell you what to believe in, whether you should trust in the future, or why and how you should live your life. But I can tell you this. In the modern world, there are two types of persons, legal and human. As for which of them controls the future, that is up to you.
Thank you, thank you so much for listening, for watching. As you can probably tell, this was my first video and it took me probably more than a dozen hours to make, which is embarrassing considering it's basically a PowerPoint with narration, but I really enjoyed making this. And if you liked it, if you made it to the end, please consider sending this to a friend of yours, someone you know who you think might enjoy a weird finance philosophy economics video. I'm just getting started here and I appreciate the love. I do have a newsletter, by the way, called The Weekly One Pager, where I profile one one startup once a week in 1,000 words or less. So if you're interested, you can subscribe to that as well as this channel. And you can find that newsletter at weeklyonepager.com or on Substack. And if by chance you came to this video from my newsletter, I am very happy to have you. So thank you so much for watching. Bye.